A very warm welcome to Football Martin and welcome along to my channel today as we build up towards the Leeds United game at St Mary's on Saturday. Southampton host Leeds, who were relegated along with us from the Premier League last season. And it's the first time we meet in the Skybet Championship this weekend. Well, it's been quite the contrast for two sides. Saints started really well under Russell Martin. Leeds, they didn't start as well under Daniel Farker, but the tides have turned pretty quickly. Football is a funny old game, isn't it? And Leeds, they're unbeaten now in their last six games. Southampton, they've been beaten in the last four, thumped in two of those against Sunderland and Leicester. Things must change for Russell Martin and his Southampton side this weekend, that is for sure. It's a big game at St Mary's and us fans, we will definitely want to see a performance from our side. So today's show is all about that game and I'm going to be building up to it with a Leeds United podcaster and broadcaster, Owen. I'm going to chat to Owen about the game. I'm going to ask him some questions about Leeds United. I'm going to dive into their season so far and find out some of their key men. Who should we look out for at St Mary's this weekend? I want to find out what the key matchups are going to be and what their weaknesses may be and also what their strengths are. It's a big game and I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are too. Comments box below. Give me your thoughts and predictions on the game. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to Football Martin. I would appreciate any subscribers. You'll be notified of when I go live and when I post a new video. Evening, Owen. Thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, thank my you, this Martin. Evening. How are we? Are you well? Oh, man, I'm I'm struggling a bit with it all at the moment. I'm not looking forward to the weekend's game particularly. I know it's going to be mighty, mighty tough for Southampton. Facing a side in Leeds United, who all of a sudden just started to find a little bit of form now. Currently, you're unbeaten in six. Talk to, talk to me about the season so far. Um, <laughs> new managers come in. Go back to the summer. Just talk me through everything that's happened at Leeds. Well, since the since the relegation, um, we've obviously had a lot of ups and downs regarding players that wanted to play and change of ownership and change of director of football. Um, obviously, players within their clauses of contracts, which we didn't realise until obviously it got broken out throughout the press. Um, so that was a bit of a situation after having players telling us that they were happy and staying with the club. And then next thing you know, during the spell of the transfer window, they ended up leaving and going to multiple different clubs, some in the UK, some in, in different in different countries. Um, Rodrigo going to Qatar, which was a very strange one. Tyler Roberts going to Birmingham City. Uh, Tyler Adams obviously going to, to Bournemouth. The rest of them were all, were all loan deals, so they are expected to come back to the club obviously at the end of the season. Would I take them back at the end of the season? Probably not, no. but <laughs> I think... They've they've kind of they've kind of t uh, sailed that boat out massively um, with the players that have been brought in. I'm very happy about it. Apart from obviously last transfer, last day of the transfer window, we did get an unknown player in, in Jaden Anthony. Was he was he proven? Did we even know about him? Probably not. I'm, I can't sit here and, and lie and say, oh yeah, I knew about him from day dot. Fantastic player. Uh, obviously, like any football fan would do. You'd instantly go to YouTube and and, and internet and look at certain individual footballers and, and be like, oh, well, actually, he looks pretty good. But obviously, not take into accountability YouTube. You could do a lot of very good editing skills and see what a player is actually like. And actually seeing his performance over the past sort of few games, I'm actually thoroughly happy with, with Jaden Anthony as a straight swap for Sinister on a, on a season-long loan. But manager, fantastic. First, first few games, I mean, Cardiff to all. You've got Birmingham, which was 1-0. Um, I, I don't want to go into too much detail regarding the Birmingham game because I've got a very, very high high opinion of that game. It should never have been a penalty. Uh, obviously, West Brom won all. Beating Ipswich comfortably 4-3. Not going to mention the Salford, Salford City result because uh, that was very horrific. Sheffield Wednesday drawing with that one. And obviously, the last game, our last few games, obviously beating Millwall three 0 and then a, a very very scrappy nil nil with with Hull City. But yeah, now we're on now we're on top form. I'm very excited to kind of see how we uh, how we set up against Southampton, who are who aren't doing very good at the moment. In in yeah, all due respect, 
it's funny, isn't it? When you look at both of our forms, like you had a little bit of a rougher start. We had a we had an okay start. Um, obviously, the transfer window was still open in those first few games, wasn't it? We, I don't know about your situation, but we didn't set our, our squad down till pretty much the end of that window because there's so much speculation. I don't know if, if you found it as a fan that you need a manager that's going to be able to really deal with so much change. We've both brought new managers into our football clubs. You brought in Daniel Farker. You've got players that are itching to leave. You've got some that might end up staying against their will. You need a really strong character to deal with it. I always felt that Russell Martin, with his inexperience from what he'd done prior, was really going to be up against it this summer. Farker, on the other hand, he's been there, seen it and done it. How did he deal with the transfer window? Well, when we first obviously appointed Daniel Farker, we had Adria Razzariani in, in charge and the 49ers were kind of like in the back burner situation. So he knew he knew that it was going to be difficult. He knew when he first took over over ownership of the of the club, things weren't going to be smooth sailing as what he, he would normally have liked to have, have had. I mean, going through the transfer window, like you've already said, it was very difficult for I think both clubs um, as... With the players that we've got, they weren't to the standard that we needed. So it was key and vital to be able to bring in players of quality, bring in players who are well and truly wanting to fight for the championship. I mean, like anybody would know the championship is a very, very difficult the difficult position to be in, whether you're going up or whether you're going down. It's no easy ride. And I think how Daniel Farker coped with it, unbelievable, especially with the two spat of the dummies regarding Luis Sinistera. And Wilfred Gnanto, I mean, luckily enough, at least one of them, of that sheer talent, he he could have kept. Uh, well, he, sorry, he, he did keep, um, which was obviously Gnanto. Whether he's staying here full term, no idea. I think for the time being, make the most of him, help us get back to that promised land. Um, and in, in January, let's see what happens, I guess. But Sinistera was a, a very weird one, especially on transfer deadline day. Yeah. How, have you found the players that have stayed that maybe thought that they were going to leave the football club? Um, how have they reacted? Have they got their heads down and really, really started to give their all? We're seeing a bit few question marks over a couple of players at our place at the moment. There was definitely a few that thought they were moving on deadline day. They didn't. But how, it's so important that these players, right, you get your head down now. You're, you're a Leeds player. You're a Southampton player. And like you've got till January to give it everything you've got. Have you found that everyone's kind of been committed and and shown what they're worth? Well, I mean, you, you look at you look at our Leeds team from from last season. I mean, at least a full eleven of our side, or pretty much a full eleven of our side, has already been and gone. Um, so we've we've basically got a new a new team. Jack Harrison obviously made his first debut last night for Everton. I don't, I know, I wish him wish him well and wish him luck. The lad, you know, what I mean, it's just a yeah. shame that he's gone down the route that he went down. Um, Sinistera, I knew for a fact with his sheer quality, he wouldn't have stayed. There's one player that did shock me, actually, and that was Elan Melier, our young French international goalkeeper. I thought he would have been snapped up by uh, either a Premier League side or even a, a Champions League side to mm. kind of help him progress. But he came out and said that, look, he wants to stay with Leeds. Leeds have given him the opportunity that no other team has, has been able to give him. He he feels like it's in his nature to stay with them and, and help them get help us get back to the promised land. And you know what? Respectfully... I couldn't agree more and I couldn't have wished for a, a better personality, to be honest. It's brilliant. And that's exactly what you want to hear. You, you, you've done some interesting transfer business. One man that we that we can't not talk about, Jed's in the comments on over on YouTube. And he, he said, I can't see he meaning us winning, um, Southampton winning. He said, Perot is just too good. What a signing Perot was for Leeds United. It come a bit, a little bit out of nowhere, didn't it? Were you, were you surprised that you managed just to nail it? Yeah, because there's a lot of like I'm in an iron at the time. Southampton were in for him. There was talk of Premier League clubs wanting him as well. Everton being one of those. And you guys land him. Um, you must have been chuffed a bit. I I'm actually guilty when I say this. I mean, I'm very much an open book. Like I won't I won't be that that delusional Leeds fan and sit there and go, Oh, I knew he'd, he'd come to us. We're a massive club. I was actually one of the very few that said at the start of the window when the speculation first originally came out about Joel Perrault. I said, nah, he won't come to us. He won't come to us. Him and Glenn Kamara, guaranteed by the end of the transfer window, I even tweeted it as well. I even said, Glenn Kamara, Joel Perot, 
by the end of the window, he won't come to us. And I even pinned the tweet. And do you know what? I actually retweeted it when he signed for us, and I saw him in the I saw him in the lead stop, and I looked very silly when I when I did it. But do you know what? It's because I think it's because we're not with Leeds United. We're not used to getting sheer quality. I think over the past three four seasons, we're used to bringing in players who think they've got potential and then become yeah. a massive flop. Obviously, you know, you've, you did have the likes of Rafinha. He is absolute sheer class, um, but he's definitely one of the very few of Victor Orta's signings over the last God knows how many years that has uh, has come in, spent big, and then flopped. <laughs> so, Joel Perot, yeah, fantastic striker. Brilliant bit of business. What's he been like so far? For we, Many of us Southampton fans will have Pro envy, there's no doubt about that. What's he been like since he since he come in? He's yeah, he's he's a very fantastic, nimble footballer. I mean, we as Leeds fans still can't work out where he actually plays because on paper we thought he was sort of our new number nine, but he sits really deep. So he's basically like a Patrick Bamford esque, where he will mm-hmm. sit deep, hold the ball, and then release it. Now, I, <laughs> at first I was like Jorginho Rutter just behind him. I'm thinking it isn't going to work. This is not going to work. We've had this same principle before when we had Jorginho Rutter behind Bamford or Rutter behind Joffe, and it doesn't work. Or even Rutter behind Rodrigo doesn't work. Mm. And the, whatever's happened with back with Farker, he has managed to turn Perot and Rutter into absolute workhorses and bounce off each other. And it's just been very, very dangerous, especially yeah. going forward. He looks a great bit of business. He really does. Who else has been standout for any of us that are going to be at the game the weekend? Who, who who's the danger men? Obviously, we know we know what about Perot, but who who else are we looking at that we we really need to be wary of? So, depending on how he lines up, which if I know, then I know Ampadu in that holding midfield role. He likes to mop up everything, absolutely everything. He has been a very key vital when it comes to helping our defence out massively. He has been a definitely a breath of fresh air to say he's only, what, 22 years old, buying him for £7 million from Chelsea. Absolute mm-hmm. steal. I never thought how good he would be until, obviously, I seen him play. And you know what? I've been blown away by him. Absolutely yeah. blown away by him. Many managers talk about mid- midfields win games, and Jurgen Klopp's come out and said it many a times. Um, games and his assistant manager spoke about it a lot last season in press conferences. Games are won in midfield. The midfield matchup between between us will be really, really interesting. The one thing I think we lack is physicality. Um, so I don't know about your midfield. You're quite a physical midfield, Leeds. Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, we've actually got a 17 year old in our midfield in, in Archie Gray. I mean, he is as bad as it is to say, he's a breath of fresh air. I never thought of anyone of being such a young age. Bearing in mind he is still in that position where he can't get changed in the first team first team dressing room. He has his own little wings and he's also safeguarded on and off the coaches. And to have him in that double pivot with either A, the likes of Ampadu, Glenn Kamara or Gruev, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, I think the, the midfield we have now, it's definitely amazing. Definitely fantastic. Yeah, you've got a really good midfield. I, I do fear us in midfield, but just being a little bit too lightweight. I don't know if our manager's got, got the got the players required to to do what he really needs. Somebody that's going to get a foot in when we need. We we like to play this possession based football. We've got no, we've got a side that have got no confidence. And it is a little bit of a worry of how it could unfold at the weekend. Slow pedestrian football out from the back by us. Do you think that Leeds will look to press Saints and really go at them from the get-go because Saints look to be a side that if they're pressed and put under pressure, they will make mistakes. Yeah, I mean, what I have noticed with Leeds, especially over the last three games, we have that first five minutes where we will look at a team and work out how they play. Our our wing-backs, because they're not full-backs anymore, the, the wing-backs... Yeah, they press wing-backs, don't they? Forward. Yeah, yeah, they'll press a lot further forward, which obviously will then help, obviously, the attackers. But it's hard to see how we'll play against you because, obviously, on paper, ourselves, yourself, Leicester City are sort of favourites to, quote, go up. Yeah. So I'm not sitting back and saying that it's going to be an easy thrashing against you guys because if if Russell Martin has done his homework, um, he should know how to play against us, especially at home as well. 
So mm. I don't feel like it's going to be an easy game at all. And I think when what Farker said earlier, yes, we're on form, but we've also got to take into consideration every game is completely different. We just need to take that winning mentality, put it into this game, and just try and iron out the iron out the mistakes. Yeah, Max Dave Vlogs has just come on with a good comment. He it, it, it said a, there's a few faces missing for you. The big, these big misses, Gonto Spence, huge misses. Mm. Oppor- opportunity for Saints to exploit those players out the side, or I. Uh... I, I personally don't think so because I mean last game we we didn't have Spence in I mean we had Gnonto out Jaden Anthony obviously came on absolute sheer class we had the likes of Dan James especially against the three nil three nil win over Millwall Dan James obviously got two assists so Gnonto is not a massive miss Spence from what I've seen of him for the last like what fifteen odd minutes when he came on yeah he looked class but I wouldn't say there will be a massive miss. I mean, Sam Byram, left back, has been a breath of fresh air. Mm. So that's one player. Luke Aylin in right back. Jack, Jamie Shackleton in right back has also been doing fantastic. But I don't think they are massive misses from, from as, of, as of now. I think if Spence would played a while back and he showed his quality a while back, then I would have said I'm a little bit nervous with his quality. Mm we might be missing out, but I think how Bill and Jack and Shea, uh, Jamie Shackleton are doing right now, I think, yeah, I think we're all right in that position. <laughs> and, where, and from a Southampton perspective, where where can Leeds be exploited? Where would Martin be looking at? They've obviously done their research over the, over the last week. Where would they be looking to exploit Leeds, do you think? When, when we press, we press in numbers. So like I've said at the start, when we go forward, our fullbacks will then go forward and obviously then Ampadu will then sit deep and basically create like three at the back. So if anything, if you've got sort of pacey wingers, you can then get in behind the fullbacks, don't give them a chance to then come back and then obviously square it in the middle where it's going to be more open because you're going to have Arch or Ampadu in that midfield. And I think if Southampton could exploit us, it'd probably be down the wings. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what we do because we've been playing Adam Armstrong who who can play there, but he's not got loads and loads. He doesn't go in behind players. He likes to play a safe pass. I think that Sam Madozia come back into the side the weekend for us. And it'd be interesting to see if Shea Adams does start up top or he, or he puts Adam Armstrong back in. It'd be really interesting to see how we look to exploit Leeds because like he, he'd go out and he's not massively Martin going to change the way he wants his side to play. So it'd be interesting to see if he's prepared to let his wingers actually have a bit of a go because they've seemed a little bit pedestrian saints in the last few games. And he has come out and said, look, his side need to be less passive when they take on Leeds at the weekend. Um, and that's one thing that we, we're going to have to do. But I, I just want to look at the league table and look, your turn at, uh, turnaround in the last couple of weeks has, has, been, has been great to see. If we look at the bottom half at the moment. You can see we slipped to 15th now. We've lost four, our last four in a row. Um, you can see the goals conceded is 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 alarming for us. You know, nineteen conceded. It's it's absolutely alarming. Just the ten points on the board, but he's got to obviously turn it around pretty quickly. You turn around and we look at look at Leeds's position in the table now, and and where you a little bit of run of form and what that can do to a side. You're going to get it up now if it comes up. There we go. Look, you're you're up to sixth in the league. Not not been beaten like we said in six games now. Um, Thirteen points on the board. Things are just starting to to turn around for Leeds, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, like like Farker said, and like most most obviously Leeds fans will say, we want to take this this league sort of game by game. I get, we you know, I, I've I got carried away sort of the start of the season and said that you know it's going to be HMS sort of run the league. Um, yeah, we had that here. We had that here. HMS Pistol League, we had all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but we've been in this position multiple times. 17 plus years we've been in this division before we obviously got promoted back to the Premier League under Marcelo Bielsa. So we know the league. We know how it works. We've got a manager who's very championship experienced. Championship experienced. So I think if we do end up getting a, a decent result against Southampton, then I'd be happy. It obviously would carry on with our unbeaten streak and obviously we potentially could go to fifth, mm. off depending on how the other how the other teams do, but it just depends how we show up. 
we've just got to understand that against Southampton, it's not going to be easy. Like I've said prior, it's not going to be easy. If Martin has done his homework, he will set up a certain way against Leeds, make it very difficult, like Sheffield Wednesday did against us, where they just sit back, defend, put 10 men behind the ball and try and counter-attack. And that seems to be our weakness. So, yeah. Matt Dave Vlogs said both teams do like to play high up the pitch, don't they? Fullbacks get forward. It could be a game of chaos, but it will certainly be a game of goals, won't it? That's for sure. You can just see, you can see goals in this. And I was looking back actually at the at the prior fixtures against Leeds United. I think I've got it here. There's not a lot of draws in here. Very rarely do we draw. There was a couple sort of around the 2022s, but to there be, was a two be fair, yeah. yeah, to be fair, these are where it says W. It's like in favour of Saints. Um, but yeah, it's. Very rarely a draw between uh, between our two teams. I just think it will be goals galore. Last year at St Mary's, four goals. August last year, two two. Remember it well. I think it was on the Sunday, wasn't it? A Sunday lunchtime, maybe. If I'm right. Yeah, it was. I was with that bear man. That was back when we were in the Premier League. So obviously we had a completely different team set up then. I don't know what about yourself, but the the team that we had that that starting eleven is nothing like what we've got now. I think the only totally only player that stayed is Elan Melier, which was in that team. Yeah, and even and... even that, I think it was. I don't think he was playing. I think it was. Oh no, I'm lying. No, it was. It was Melier. It was Melier. Yeah. Oh, I and mean, I want to ask you actually. We we. At that time of playing you, you had Jesse Marsh, uh, Jesse Marsh as the manager of your football club. He was uh, relieved of his duties later on in the season, and we were heavily linked with him for a period of time. Um, would he? Had, uh, do you think he would have kept Southampton in the Premier League if he'd come here? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really know how to, how to answer that question to be honest, Martin. Because <laughs> as a Leeds fan, I couldn't stand the bloke. I, I wished and hoped and prayed that we got absolutely battered by Liverpool and, and he got sacked then. But um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I really can't answer that question. All I know from Jesse Marsh's approval and 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 tenature being in Leeds is I've got so many sayings in my head which have been tattooed in my brain like in the moment and play with in, playing with integrity and playing for each other and I, I, that's all I can remember from Jesse Marsh never mind yeah. his playing style it's just it was bonkers I think there was one game we were playing against I can't remember who we were playing against but we were winning comfortably next thing you know he brings on Rodrigo and then he injures him I'm like why why, why would you do that yeah. Why would you do that? Our leading top goal scorer, you bring him on in a cup game, which you didn't need to bring him on for. He gets injured and now he's out. I'm like, he's just, uh, he's, to put it politely, he is the Ted Lasso of the of the championship or the Premier League. Back. <laughs> he's not <laughs> to, gone back into management, has he? Uh, he must have some sort of payoff where, he, where he's quite comfortable at the moment. There, there, there's no need to go and look for another job, maybe. Well, the last thing I saw of him, he was in a he was in a Champions League presenter against AC Milan. He was currently on pitch side, uh, talking to I think it was like Mika Rich. Oh no, it wasn't Mika Rich because he was at um, what's Mika Rich is doing? He's on soccer. He's, M yeah, he's, he's, got, he's on Sky somewhere other. Um, BBC. He's literally everywhere, isn't he? At the moment, yeah. literally everywhere. But yeah, no. To, to answer your question, I I, I, pff, I actually laughed when. When you were linked with Jesse Marsh, I was hoping and praying that you did get linked with him. So he went down, but just unfortunately, he did go down anyway. So, yeah, I, I don't think he was the man. I don't think anyone could have saved us last year. Um, and the guy that did come in never played to the to the strengths of the side. Really, we didn't. Re we went down with an absolute whimper last season. I think um, Russell Martin continually talks at the moment about scar tissue from the last couple of seasons. Um, He's brought a lot of new players in. So I think you talk about Scottish and there might be with some players, but our home form, Owen, is 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 dreadful. We've only won three home games, league games in the last calendar year. So I think it's a bit of an issue. The atmosphere at St Mary's will be interesting on Saturday, depending on how the game starts. I wouldn't want to see us concede too early because I think if we're the side that concede early, I think there'll be problems. I think the, the pressure's mounting on, on Russell Martin already. You know, the fans are fickle, aren't they? Fans, they're quick to boo now. There's a lot of talk about booing at football games. How do you feel about all this booing at football games? Mm, I can see the frustration and I can't sit there for a second and say that I've not done it myself because I have, especially when it comes to away games. I've, I've done it. I've done it at home games. It, you're just venting your frustration. The bottom yeah. line is 
the bottom line is it's down to your ownership and if your ownership aren't listening and you're booing it, it just becomes pointless you may as well go into a into a football state a football stadium and start making farm animals noises because yeah. it's literally going to be the same principle whether you boo moo or even quack mm. like with Radzariani, he should have sold up a long time ago but i think at st mary's if you sit deep and end up scoring first which you potentially could do it's a possibility i think that's when you're you fa- when your fans will then start sort of lifting it up and lifting their spirits up. Yeah, our fans desperately need something to cheer about. Um, the one thing we can't afford is a poor, poor performance Saturday. He has to get a performance from his players. Um, it's absolutely vital. The last two home games have both been defeats. Leeds will travel in numbers at the weekend. I- I'm pretty sure they would have sold out their allocation. Though. And have, you, have you heard what the how many fans you're bringing down to St Mary's at the weekend? I've not actually seen the the fans, but I know it'll be the few few uh, few thousand fans that'll be coming down. Yeah, they usually sell out their allocation here. It's a well travelled club. I, I'm based just off Southampton on a on a little island, and there's loads of Leeds fans here. So I know that I'll be on on a on a, on a ferry travelling to the game, surrounded by Leeds fans because everybody wants a glimpse of Leeds when they're they're on the south coast. Um, how are you feeling about the game? I want to do like score predictions with you now. Um, I'll give you my score predictions, but I'm going to ask you first. You're the guest on my show today, so what's your score prediction and you, and your star man as well? We get your star man. My, I've said this. I've said this score prediction to um, the rest of the, the other Leeds fans that I've got a little association with, and I've said to uh, multiple other fans as well during sort of social media lives. But I'm going with two one Leeds. I think it'll be a very much an end to end game. Um, I think it'll be very scrappy in that midfield. I think it will take a little bit of time for both of us to settle. Um, I think who will score first? I don't know. It might be a draw at half time, and then someone in the second half will will pull it. But I think two one, and I'm going to go for probably Georginia Russell to be our star man again. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I was on a podcast just a minute ago, and I'm going to have to go with the same. I went with a three one defeat. For Saints, I don't see anything other than a, than a defeat. Any Saints fans tuning in, I'm, I know I'm being negative. Um, give me your comments in the comments box but, um, on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, what's your score predictions? I'm going with 3-1. I think our star man will be Carl Walker-Peters. I'm very surprised we've still got someone of Carl Walker-Peters' ability in our side. He's somebody that we do have to utilise at the weekend, that's for sure. But I just see Leeds being too strong for us. I really do. I think if we... If we come out like another another fan has said and he reckons he's going to beat you 5-0, I don't think that'll be the case. I'll be very surprised if it happens. If it does, then I'm, unfortunately, I think it's probably the end of your manager, personally. I think he's under big pressure. We, we, we head to Stoke on Tuesday night after playing you. So the pressure mounts for playing, playing the side that are struggling for form at the moment. don't think they've won for five games. Where do you travel midweek, Owen? What's your, what your midweek picture? We go to QPR on the ninth on the fourth of October. Yeah, another so another. T- so you, you've got a tough a, a tough game there. QPR, everyone. No, no they keep yeah. running. QPR come to us at home on You're the right. October. So yeah, we're at home. So we don't have that that London London black cloud over our head as we've yeah, seen yeah. over the last <laughs> time. that long? Yeah, I I um yeah. There's, there's, there's someone in the comments box. KWP with normal hair or blue hair. I still can't believe he's got blue hair with our rivals being Portsmouth, I have to be honest. I find that quite bizarre and the colours of Leeds United as well. Got to say, Owen, I love your kit this season. How good's that Adidas kit you're wearing? Uh, which one? Because the I white one the white one looks really nice. The the yellow I one. The white one. I love the yellow the white one. one. The pinkish one looks like a fruit salad. Back yeah, in the day. It does, yeah. Okay. It does, yeah. Um, so I'm, mm, I'm on the fence about it. I mean, even with the goalkeeping kit, the goalkeeping kit is just weird. It's very weird, like purple shorts and a blue top, blue home shirt. It's uh, it's strange. You spoke about Melier. He's done well, hasn't he? Like, there's a lot of talk about our goalkeeper. We both got fairly young goalkeepers. Um, does he like to play out, play out from the back with his feet? Our goalkeeper certainly does. He's 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 told by by the manager, no doubt, that he's not allowed to kick it long. Is your is your goalkeeper allowed to kick it long, or is it all out from the back? I, I can't work out with Melier's plan anymore. And the reason why I can't work out Melier's plan, I mean, in, in, without sounding too big-headed, our keeper doesn't get challenged as much at the moment in time. Since we obviously made them key vital changes, our defence seems to be solid. 
with obviously Ampadu and, and Gray in front. He doesn't get challenged, but when he does get challenged, he seems to obviously makes the key vital saves. But to answer your question, does he play it out? It just depends how, what mood he's in, to be fair. If he's under pressure, then he'll kick it out. If it just gets played back to him, then he'll, he'll, see he'll convert it around the back four or the back three. So he is composed, but yeah, he does make me very nervous at some points. I think I'm just probably having like postnatal depression or something yeah. <laughs> from, <laughs> from previous seasons when he's, he's made a few little slight mess ups. <laughs> yeah, young Gavin Bazunu at our place come under huge pressure last season. He went from playing for our rivals, Portsmouth in League One, come to the Premier League last year and it's unforgiving the Premier League especially with a very young side. He, he, he took a lot, lot of stick last season, lost a bit of confidence, but we didn't really have a goalkeeper that was fit, ready to take his place when needed. So we've got a goalkeeper that doesn't have loads of confidence, to be honest. I think Leeds will go after him and try and test our keeper the weekend, I believe. Yeah, with with Leeds, what I've noticed with us is we don't like shooting from far out. I think the last time I saw anyone shoot from far out was probably Ampadu, which got, which got saved. Um, but we we seem to want to sort of play it in the box and then tap it in. I don't know why we've got this philosophy. We had it under the past three managers where we won't shoot from distance and it baffles me why it happens. I don't know if Southampton do the same thing, but yeah, it doesn't make no sense. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I'm looking forward to the game. Um, I'm going to do a match day vlog when I'm there as well. So I'm going to try and uh, try and grab a few Leeds fans before the game as well, a few Southampton fans. So get a bit of reaction. I really, really um, appreciate you coming on the show today. It's been time, brilliant to speak to you. Your, your, your knowledge of, uh, of Leeds is, is amazing. So thank you very much for giving up your time. Um, before welcome. you go, can you let the where can where can the viewers find you? You're you're well worth a follow. I follow you over on TikTok. Where where can the where can the viewers follow you, Owen? So you can either drop me a follow on TikTok, which is official underscore O Dog, um, or you can find me on Twitter, which is uh, give me two seconds. I've got to remember I've, your handle, like me. I always forget. Yeah, I've tried, I've tried to link is, them all up now. Which is official underscore O Dog twenty seven. So I'm on two of the two, two of the platforms, um, and you'll be able to find me on there until I uh, have my little knowledge of trying to do the whole YouTube situation. So oh, happy with you. I'll give you some tips on YouTube. The final whistle was great with the, great with the YouTube. Um, are you are you jumping on the final whistle this evening for the prediction show? I will be. Yes, yes. I've I've already explained to him that I will I will be on. Um, I will be charging my phone up first. Yeah. So guys, make sure you uh you tune in to the final whistle later. It's I think it's eight p.m. this evening. That's on YouTube as well. So make sure you follow the final whistle. Owen, I will see you later on for the prediction show. And thank you for joining me on You're my well, channel welcome. today, mate. A massive shout out and a big thanks to Owen for coming on the channel today. Really looking forward to the game at St Mary's at the weekend. And if you're heading down to St Mary's, make sure you drop me a DM if you want to jump on the match day vlog with me. Um, love to get your thoughts before the game. Please do come and find me. I'll be outside St Mary's Stadium in around the main entrance area um, towards the set cement work. So if you want to come and give me your pre-match uh, predictions, please do so. And thank you for joining me for today's stream. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do subscribe. And you'll be notified when I go live or upload a video. A very warm welcome to Football Martin and welcome along to my channel today as we build up towards the Leeds United game at St Mary's on Saturday. Southampton host Leeds, who were relegated along with us from the Premier League last season. And it's the first time we meet in the Skybet Championship this weekend. Well, it's been quite the contrast for two sides. Saints started really well under Russell Martin. Leeds, they didn't start as well under Daniel Farker, but the tides have turned pretty quickly. Football is a funny old game, isn't it? And Leeds, they're unbeaten now in their last six games. Southampton, they've been beaten in the last four, thumped in two of those against Sunderland and Leicester. Things must change for Russell Martin and his Southampton side this weekend. That is for sure. It's a big game at St Mary's. And us fans, we will definitely want to see a performance from our side. So today's show is all about that game. And I'm going to be building up to it with a Leeds United podcaster and broadcaster, Owen. I'm going to chat to Owen about the game. I'm going to ask him some questions about Leeds United. I'm going to dive into their season so far and find out 
some of their key men. Who should we look out for at St. Mary's this weekend? I want to find out what the key matchups are going to be and what their weaknesses may be and also what their strengths are. It's a big game and I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are too. Comments box below. Give me your thoughts and predictions on the game. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to Football Martin. I would appreciate any subscribers. You'll be notified of when I go live and when I post a new video. Right then, guys, let's get into today's show and chat all things Saint versus Leeds with Leeds United's Owen. 